said it yesterday, I know Lincoln feels the same way, just the hospitality extended to us from the Cottonwood people has been outstanding. I know our players, coaches, sports staff, everybody's really enjoyed it. It seemed like we brought about half the university over here as well. Uh, but it, it's just been an excellent experience. Being able to go down and practice every day at AT&T Stadium is, is also something that's outstanding and an opportunity to play a prestigious program like USC and the great season they've had is just a, you know, a dream come true for us at uh, Tulane. So we're very, very excited about the ball game. Hey, Coach, thank you. Coach Riley. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody involved with the Cotton Bowl. Thank Goodyear for their support. Uh, thank everybody, everybody uh, on the Cotton Bowl staff. It's, uh, I said yesterday in our game, the the hospitality and the, really the entire event and, and how organized it is. It's, among coaching circles, it's, it's it has a little bit of a legendary status. I mean, it, and it always has. It's, there's a lot of great bowl games out there, but this one is very unique and very different. And the, from, the, from the support, uh, from how well organized it is, and as Coach Fritz said, the, the hospitality shown to our players, our staff, our families is second to none. And so it's been a great week. It's been good to get back into a little bit of a, a normal bowl normal bowl schedule, be able to, to enjoy it, be able to get the, the work, and I'm just excited for the game uh, coming up. These, these weeks get, the week is great, and, and the anticipation for the game certainly starts to build, and we're looking forward to playing a great Tulane game, or uh, a great Tulane team, um, certainly one of the best venues that there is in sports. All right, thank you so much, Coach Riley and Coach Fritz. Let's go to questions from the board. Okay, here on the left side on the aisle. Hey, Lincoln, Stephen Hawking, the VAP. Um, it was a month ago tomorrow that Caleb got hurt, and he's indicated the last couple of days that he's all well. Just talk about what you've seen in his prep, and is, is he ready to go? He, he's ready to play. He's He has progressed uh, maybe a little faster than, than what we anticipated. Um, certainly very fortunate on our part that, that we had we had the opportunity to have a month, really, before this game. I mean, had it been even two weeks, you know, I, I don't, I, I doubt he would have been available. And so um, that extra time has helped. Um, and he's done a good job along with our medical staff from, um, from, from the second that the Pac-12 game was over, uh, really working hard to, to get back to it. And he's uh, practiced well really with, love, with no limitations and um, expecting to play very well. Our next question will come in front of TV riser in the back. Carl and Gillen on Fox 8 here in New Orleans. Willie, I don't know if you see me way in the back here, but yeah, I'm back here. Another bright light. Uh, watching a lot of these bowl games, uh, it's very unpredictable. I know a lot of them made that y'all are power, uh, they're y'all are group of five team, they're a power five team. Just talk about what happens in, oh, in, in these bowl games. It doesn't really matter where you're from. Y'all shown against Kansas State and other teams that you can tussle with anybody in America. When you get to this point of the year, I think, you know, you got a body of work, you know, that guys have shown what they can do. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it, it's obviously it's a, a tremendous challenge playing a great team like USC. But, you know, yeah, we, we're proud to represent our conference and university in New Orleans. Uh, you know, we're going to have to play great tomorrow. There's no doubt about it. We know that. Uh, uh, but it's a tremendous opportunity. We're excited about it. Okay, you're on the right. Uh, hi, Coach Willie. Hello. Hi, Coach Willie. Um, this is Grace from Tulane, the student ambassador for Good Year. Um, you were just named the Donna Trophy winner. Um, can you talk a little bit about this honor and what it means to you kind of coming at the end of a really historic season? Well, it's a great honor. I've read up quite a bit on Coach Todd and, and what he. Uh, you know, emphasized when he was a head coach, and, and uh, just it's a team award. Everybody knows that uh, with, with the players, and really my coaches on my staff, they've done a tremendous job uh, this season, and, and all the support staff. Uh, so many people going to have success, you know, with, you, with your team, the strength coaches, the athletic trainers, the equipment people, uh, the academic support. I, mean, I go on and on and on. And, so it's a, you know, an award for the whole team, but I'm honored to have received it. Okay, here in the middle. Right here. 
the Victorian. We got him. He has one. Okay, go ahead. Brian Cartier, LA Times. Uh, Lincoln, USC has a bit of a history, especially recently, of kind of letdowns uh, in this bowl game, especially after such a, a long layoff. What's been the key in terms of messaging with the team to just ensure that you know that that motivation is still there having been like this? Yeah, you know, we haven't got too caught up in the in the recent history. You know, this is this is different and Certainly, our expectations are, are are to have been first to prepare very well, and I think part of our job as a, as coaches and as leaders on the team is to be able to articulate to our team that this is very important, why it's important, um, and there's a lot of reasons. And honestly, the the preparation and the way the guys have approached the last 27 days would suggest to me that that they are very excited to play this game and they understand the significance both for you know, both for this team um, and, and future teams uh, because games like this certainly I mean of course they matter I mean this is the Cotton Bowl it's a New Year's Six Bowl I mean it's, it's one of the biggest games uh, in the country and it's it'll be for, for players on both teams this will be one of the games that you that they remember more than any other uh, 30 40 years down the line you'll, you'll remember playing in the Cotton Bowl You'll remember, uh, you know, for USC, you'll remember playing a, a championship to Lions squad. You'll remember, you know, kind of the last moments that those teams will ever have together. And uh, so, it's very, very important to us. Um, our preparation suggests that, that we um, that we understand that, and hopefully, our play does as well. Okay, stay on the line. Adam for us, Orange County Register, uh, Lincoln. In your experience, how much does a win in a bowl game impact like momentum and energy heading into an off season with your team? I mean, if you win, you're going to use it positive, and if you don't win, you're going to you're going to use it as fuel, right? Like I, I, I I'd rather we'd rather win. I go for a full two. That's probably not safe to say. Uh, but. It, it's a great thing, certainly for, for this team, and a chance to close out a great season. Um, but I, you know, if, if we don't win the game, then then we've had years where we didn't win a playoff game, and we came back, and we're right back in it the next year. So I, I, I think next year's team will be next year's team. I think this is about this year's team, but hopefully we can, you know, take some steps. We kind of see this as a little bit of a journey ourselves from. From uh, from the day we started, and so hopefully we can take some positive steps in the way that we play and prepare, and learn some great lessons that um, hopefully will help us tomorrow and, and <coughs> also in the future. Okay, let's move to the extreme left on the front row. Hey, Lincoln Antonio Morales from the Athletic. Obviously, you guys had a month to kind of sit on the Utah game as a defense. Just what next step do you want to see them take tomorrow and going into the top? I would just say as a team. We, you know, that football game, we, we got away from a lot of what well, we had done well to be in that football game. And um, you know, we tried to identify the reasons of why that happened and um, why some of the trust in what we were doing wasn't there specifically in the, in the second half. And we tried to learn from it and, and kind of how to be better in this game and to be the team that we were the previous 12 games. And so um, that's been a, a big point of emphasis for us. Um, and again, kind of a learning experience in that in that venue of that opportunity. Um, something that we can learn from and grow from. And again, there's been a, we've sort of vowed to, to not repeat that again. You know, like Lincoln said, obviously we want to do that. There are a lot of preparation and geared towards doing that. Uh, yeah, it, it just is a, you know, it's really an honor for us to play against a team like USC in the Cotton Bowl. The last time two was in a game like this was 1940, a couple years ago. Anybody in the game? <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> <Anybody? laughs> uh, so, yeah, we, we, we want to finish a year off great. You know, and, and all our preparation has been toward doing that. So, we're, we're excited about the opportunity. And I keep saying that. But we are really pumped about uh, being able to play the ball game tomorrow. Well, and let's move to the right. Hi, Willie. Steve Helwick, SB Nation. Last week, Michael Pratt, since here, and Ford decided to return for another year with this program. 
What have you seen out of those two from the last few years of building this team to where it is today? How important is it to keep those cornerstones of the program going into 2023? Well, I think it's very important. They're both great players, great leaders, both captains. Been, you know, they've been two-year captains. They'll be three-year captains uh, next year. So uh, I think Michael more or less did because there's a lot of people asking him about it. He came to me and said, hey, can I go ahead and say something? I said, you betcha. But uh, well, we're, we're very excited about having them. both have degrees here. And, I guess they got their degrees a couple of weeks ago. So they'll be working on their graduate degrees here coming up. So we're very, very excited about having two quality student athletes like some serious. Michael will come back for us. We'll move back to the left. Gary Smith, TimesBegin.com. Willie, when you hired Kurt Hester in January as strength and conditioning coordinator, and what has he brought to the program? It's a two part question, too. And then, you had the senior co-captain be present for your interview process for that. What was the thought process there, and had you done that before? Well, he's done a, just an outstanding job. He's, uh, he's got a tremendous amount of energy and juice. Uh, but more importantly, he's highly intelligent. He's got a couple degrees from Tulane. Uh, he understands, you know, I remember during the interview process, I asked him about sprint mechanics. He worked about 10 minutes. I did, Tell him to shut up and let's move on to something else. <laughs> Every question you just go on and on about and it was way over my head, I know that. Uh, but he's done an excellent job of instilling discipline and but more important, I think getting the guys better physically. You know, he's faster and quicker and stronger and, and uh, helping them with the recovery and he's just always available to him as well. So he's been a big part of our success. They will move to the right. You're on the aisle. Uh, Gross Barger was kind of registered. Uh, Lincoln, uh, condolences on the passing of Mike Leach. What has this last month been like for your staff? We're kind of rallying together. And what is it meant to see all the uh, different tributes to him throughout the whole season? It was a, a, a tough, you know, emotional time for our staff. I mean, I think we took 15 different members down to down to Starkville for the, for the uh, memorial service. There's, you can obviously trace the roots of the majority of our staff back to, back to Mike in one way or another. And, um, so yeah, it's been, uh, you know, it was, it was a, certainly an emotional time, you know, getting to communicate with his family some. Certainly getting down there to Starkville and seeing so many faces of the, the, the people that he impacted, um, so many of them that have become Colleagues and lifelong friends, and uh, they're kind of, it's honestly a little crazy to think how much he's impacted the game, and, and probably more so just so many people and their families. And, um, so yeah, it's certainly been tough, uh, but you know, we've tried to try to all rally together. Um, it's been great to see the outpouring of support, and, and it's certainly you know, pretty special to see that you know in, in this year that, that you know one of his uh, you know. One of the guys off the tree with, with Coach Dykes at TCU is going to get a chance to play for the championship here in, uh, in nine or ten days. So, very, very fitting there as well. And you're on the coach's left on the front row. Uh, Ava Brand, Goodyear student ambassador for USC. This has obviously been a historic season coming from a 4 and 8 record last year. Um, it has the potential to be the first 12 1 team for USC since 2008 and the best turnover in team history. How special would that be for you and this team? It would be very special for us. It's, uh, you know, it's always, uh, this has been a different challenge um, and, and we knew it would be coming here. And, and I think the ability to, for a team to, to rally, to come together, um, certainly in the way that we have and to be able to experience some of the success has been great. And what's the best part about it has been seeing that the guys have been able to be rewarded or see some success after they've put the work in and after they've bought in. And for them to be able to experience some of that has been, I think, the best part for us as a staff. And so um, that's been, it's, certainly, it's been a fun season. Right? It's as fun a season as I've had coaching in a long time. I think a lot of our staff members would say the same thing. And certainly don't want it to end, um, but it's a, obviously a great opportunity to try to finish on high level. And you know, on the front? Yeah. Uh, Ryan Abraham, USCfootball.com. Uh, Lincoln, you're going to miss a couple of veteran leaders on the offensive line. How's the 
whole offense adjusted these last few weeks preparing for the Cotton Bowl? No, there's certainly, you know, there are two big losses. I mean, uh, you know, certainly you know, saw a little bit of that with, with not having, you know, four East for the, uh, you know, for the championship game. You know, obviously losing, uh, losing Brent Nealon has been such a kind of a cornerstone of this team. And, and this offensive line was, was a big loss as well. I think we benefited from having time being able to, to bank a lot of practices with these groups as, as we've had to shuffle some guys around to, to make it work. And it certainly would have been a, a much bigger challenge, uh, you know, maybe on a normal game week or a normal seven-day window, especially when you're playing a really good defense like we're getting ready to play. Uh, so I think our guys have tried to manage the time, try to create some continuity here over the last month. And as it is in every game, that will be a, a very, very important matchup. Still in the back in front of the TV, Brian. Hey, Willie, it's uh, Garland Hill on Fox 8 again. When I sat down with you last week, you talked about some old games you coached and I'd never heard of back in your long career. Uh, have you noticed a difference in the kids this week uh, from the past bowl games? I mean, Ed, have you noticed that they're kind of taking on the enormity of the situation that this is one of the biggest bowls they're able to play, play in their life? Yeah, this one has certainly been different. We've been to some great bowl games at Tulane. I think some other ones have been fantastic. But, uh, you know, there's just, this is, as Lincoln said, this is a reward for a great season. And we came here, I wanted our guys to have fun, but also focus on football. I think we've done both. Cotton Bowl has allowed us to do both by putting on these fantastic events. Uh, so it, it's just been a, as Coach said, it's a one, once in a lifetime experience coming to the Cotton Bowl and playing in the, you know, January 2nd, 2023. And, and, uh, you know, I'm sure these guys will never forget it. We want this to be something that springboards us into consistent success year after year after year. You know, when it came to Tulane, they had some great teams, some great players, just hadn't done it consistently. And it's, it's always been our goal to come close. You know, a few years back, they, you know, obviously, we'd like to be on this stage as much as possible. You're on the front, coach is right. Thank you. Uh, Coach Riley, Ken Caps from Football Writers Association of America. Yesterday at the breakfast, you spoke very fondly of Milshi, and I was just wondering how often you get back there, and what did, what did the folks of Milshi will say about their uh, favorite son? <laughs> After yesterday, I may not be the favorite son. <laughs> um, I, I, I try to get back. Uh, my parents moved uh, from there recently, uh, relocated to Lubbock, so. I probably won't go back there quite as much as I did um, in previous years, but typically it was once or twice a year to to get back to see everybody. Um, and the, yeah, the, the town's been great. I mean, a lot of support. We'll have uh, several people from our from our hometown uh, at the game tomorrow. It's nice to, with us now being in LA, it's nice to have a game. You know, here a little bit closer uh, to home with some of those people that have been a part of our lives and, and certainly become a part of our, our growth. Come and, and celebrate this moment with us, and so um, yeah, it's like I said yesterday, place. It's very meaningful for me and uh, my upbringing, the setting that it happened in, the people that, that it happened with. I wouldn't change it for anything. Next question on the TV riser. Coach Fritz, Eric Lee, WGO, ABC 26 in New Orleans. Uh, the Tulane defense has been stingy all season long, but talk to me about facing and what you guys can do to slow down the Southern Cal offense led by Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Davis? I don't want to say too much, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, they've, they've got outstanding skill players, and obviously it all starts with the quarterback. He's, you know, he can extend plays. I heard somebody compare him to uh, Patrick Mahomes, and I'm the old Kansas City guy. I think, did you coach Patrick? I was, I was, uh, I left right before. Right before, but, uh, that's a fair comparison. I mean, he is unbelievable, and a lot of times guys get out of pocket and they can't throw the ball accurately. And he certainly can do that time and time again, so that's going to be part of it. And, uh, you know, just trying to mix some things up, do some things a little bit different. We, I think we're quite a bit different than maybe last year we played uh, coach when he was at Oklahoma, you know, what we're doing. But uh, just a very, very explosive offense, and it you know, obviously starts with the quarterback. Okay, closing questions now for our head coaches. We'll swing to the left here on the front. 
Lincoln, I know you guys had practice during the first half of the TCU game yesterday. What was it like, you know, watching Garrett then? What was that conversation like with him after the game? Yeah, it was it was awesome. I got to I got back to the room, I was able to catch the, the fourth quarter and I was got a flip from the, the football coach into just the, the nervous brother um, watching the end of the game and uh, it, it was awesome. It was. I was uh, I was really proud of them. You know, what a what a great run that they've had and, and uh, went to a game that really nobody kind of gave them a chance and uh, to see them play the way they did and make so many of the big plays, uh, just a really football team and, and then obviously the yeah, even works out better than the championship game is about 30 minutes from my house. Um, so we'll be excited to get over there and support him. He's uh, He's been at a lot of our championship games and bowl games throughout the years and, and it's uh, schedule-wise it's never really worked out for me to, to be able to be at, at some of his events um, and so we had to get there and to be able to watch him and then those guys compete in that game will be phenomenal. But I'm just really, really proud of him. Uh, he's, he's carved his own way and, and uh, worked really hard. He's working for a great head coach and a great program, and, and they've had a, a really just a magical run. And, um, so I'll be uh, uh, here in uh, a little over a week. I'll be a big, big TCU fan. Have time for one last question and be on uh, Coach's lap from Rob. Uh, Ava Brand again, Coach Riley. You guys have said all season long that good teams are run by coaches and great teams are run by players. In this past month, who have you seen step up, especially, and who are you hoping to step up into next season? Yeah, we've. I think our leaders have remained pretty consistent throughout the year. Um, we've had to, you know, with, with the losses of a couple of guys um, coming into this game, we've had to have a few others step up. And the offensive line, we certainly talked about, and we'll still rely on. Certainly, Mandich, and I, I think John Monheim is a really a, a young leader. It's been a really good player for us in the program all year. That's that's kind of been forced to, but is also ready to take on more of a leadership role. Um, and then I think our, our captains, um, you know, certainly Tuli has been um, very involved in I think the preparation for this game in terms of just the mentality of the team. Shane Lee is certainly always somebody that's right in the middle of that conversation. So. Um, now our guys have taken it personal. They, um, the, the player-like groups that Coach Fritz spoke about this yesterday at the, at the breakfast, that's, those are typically your best teams. And honestly, we probably, neither one of us are sitting up here right now um, if our teams didn't have some pretty strong internal leadership. And we're, we've certainly been blessed with that this year. And it's been a, a very important part of our, our bowl preparation. Okay, I think this completes our news conference. And the only